All right, welcome back. It's time for our first hot topic. I want to take a look at what's going on with NLC and TUC strike and uh, CSO's kick against this upcoming strike, scheduled to take place on the 3rd of October. CSOs under the aegis of Civil Society and Workers Dialogue Forum have kicked against NLC and TUC plan strike scheduled for the 3rd of October and have vowed to organize anti-NLC protests across the 36 states and the FCT on the same date that NLC and TUC are planning to go on their strike. And I've been joined by Mohammed Abdullahi, public affairs analyst, and he's joining us from Kaduna State. Good morning to you, Mohammed. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah. Indeed, a pleasure to have you. Mohammed. before we talk about this NLC TUC strike, let's talk about something that's happening right now in Kaduna State where you are. Was it, what's the truth about the election, the governorship election? Was it, did the court say it's inconclusive or what? Uh, thank you for that question. It's actually uh, a bit confusing for almost everyone. Um, you remember, the, I mean, the court proceedings journalists were actually not allowed in and then uh, the the proceedings were actually held uh, via zoom as well uh precedents from what happened in kano state and anyway. so uh, technology is playing a crucial role if i was cheap in that mm -hmm. but again to your question particularly um yes uh one of the challenges is, is the fact that uh, since journalists were not let in you know uh, most media houses uh professionals actually relied on uh, statements from uh, you know the parties to the case. So interestingly, the ruling party, I mean the APC uh, governor led by Governor Ubasani, actually put up a press statement last night, con congratulating itself and the party that, that um, the, the the court, I mean the tribunal, withheld its uh, its victory. I mean, but again, another shocking thing was you know uh, the candidate of the PDP. I mean, the main opposition party in Kaduna State also put up a contracting, a contrasting statement. I mean, uh, saying uh, you know the court declared um, the, the I mean the tribunal declared the election inconclusive. Uh, so it's quite challenging. So it, it means uh, media houses that were sympathetic to any of the party involved, uh, you know, took the stories from uh, the angle from which. Uh, you know, like I said, the, the, the parties they were more sympathetic to, uh, you know, um, gave out their own statement. So that's why we have media conflicting statements in the media. I mean, if you look at the media landscape, you find some people, some of the media saying it's inconclusive, some of the media saying the, the, the tribunal withheld, uh, I mean, the, the elections of, of the APC. So it's quite confusing at the moment. In fact, at the moment, we have not seen the court judgment to actually discern uh, what really happened. So I think we have to give it a few more days for us to actually understand clearly what happened. But at the moment, it's still a confusion in Kaduna, in Kaduna State to what the tribunal uh, judgment is all about. Interesting. Very interesting drama there. Okay, let's go to our topic of discussion, and that's the fact that CSOs are kicking against the planned strike by NLC and TUC. In fact, they want to organize anti-NLC protest on the same date. What do you make of this, this kick by the CSOs? Why? Of course, they've given their reasons. They, they think it's, it's uncalled for. Uh, they believe that negotiations are already ongoing, and so NLC should hold on and wait for government. Do you see them as working for the government or just being concerned Nigerian citizens? Uh, and it's, it's interesting uh, because remember this is democracy, so people have um, are entitled to their own opinion. Um, sometimes even what you think is quite white. Uh, some people think it's black. So and that's 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 what democracy is all about. You know, people justifying their actions and then their, their opinion. Uh, everyone has right to his or her own opinion. Uh, but again, some of the limitations of democracy is the fact that. Um, if you if you are part of the system, you actually do not have any right to criticize the system. Uh, so that that is also another justification of the system. I mean, democracy. So having said that, um, I mean the CSOs, right? Yes, they, they have their right to you know uh, also um, talk about uh, 
countering the 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 planned protest. Uh, I mean, the strike action by the NLC. Uh, remember, in our last discussion here, probably about two weeks ago, we talked about the fact that uh, even the NLC itself is not united. Even some of the workers. I mean. Uh, like the TUC is actually countering the NLC itself. You know, uh, they are a bit more sympathetic to, to government. Mm. So um, I would sit down here and say uh, the CSOs are working for the government. Uh, uh, but I, I think, like I said earlier, every uh, organization and society have got uh, their own right based on their own thinking and what they feel uh, at the, the situation is at the moment. So yes, the uh, situation, if the, so if the, I mean, the negotiations between the government and the NLC is ongoing and they feel, yes, uh, NLC should give government more time in order to, uh, you know, reach a decision. I think that is their own right of thinking. Uh, but again, if you want to ask, how long would, I mean, would the federal government continue uh, with the with the negotiation? Remember, um, the, the I mean, the, the president I know is still out of the country, even more than five days or six days since the end of the United Nations General Assembly, the 78th General Assembly in New York. Mm. Uh, but the pre president, I don't know, is still out of the country. So, um, and like I said, the other time, some of these demands and negotiations, even though the Minister of Labor is here, I mean, uh, uh, Senator Simon Lalong, uh, I mean, is, is, is in the country. But some of these ratifications will actually need the input and the final say of the president. So perhaps the, the, the president being out of the country and perhaps maybe we'll have him back before the October 1st celebration, I mean, this is the third uh, independence anniversary, uh, which is in perhaps two, three, two, three days time. Uh, maybe that might ease the tension, I mean, of both parties, both the NLC and the CSOs at the moment. Uh, we never can tell. But... Um, uh, yes, the CSO have their right, and then based on their own decision and the situation on ground, they also have their right to say they are countering the NLC. In fact, despite the fact that, um, uh, if you look at the fact that even part of the members of the NLC, I mean the TUC, are also not in tandem with what the NLC is planning. Mm. Indeed, Nigerians uh, are beginning to wonder why the president is not here back from New York, if indeed he is still in New York. And as you have said, October 1st, we'll know where he'll be addressing us from. Is it from Nigeria or outside of the country? Now, the AGF, the Attorney General of the Federation, has warned Labour that they'll be going against the court ruling that they should not go on strike. But uh, Labour is calling, us, is calling it judicial terrorism. Yes, again, uh, <laughs> that's that's a bit funny uh, because every one of us should be bound. I mean, by by the ruling of the court, and that's what rule of law is all about. I know there's the ruling of the court that uh, prevents labor at the moment from you know continuing their strike action to I mean for the country to to be in peace. I mean, it it behoves on every citizen and every government to actually follow the rule of law is very important. I think if Labour wanted to continue with their strike action and their planned protest, it's simple to actually uh, is, uh, to actually um, appeal um, the existing and subsisting uh, court ruling. Mm -hmm. So it, rather than just um, you know shoving it aside and saying uh, calling, the, calling the judiciary in their own words now uh, judicial terrorism to in order to continue with their plan action. So it's very important because these are some of the things that we we feel that the, the past government, I mean, led by uh, ex-president uh, Muhammad Buhari, was doing that wasn't right. There were so many court injunctions and so many court actions, uh, I mean, uh, that that the, 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 the former uh, administration didn't respect. So I think in this new dispensation, uh, all and sundry should understand that it's not uh, in the right interest of the country in direct interest of citizens of the country and the, the, the people at large to uh, you know, show aside court rulings. It's, it's important that whenever we disagree with court rulings, we can actually appeal mm. or you know, seek for other court injunctions in order to carry out our own action rather than just uh, a blanket uh, uh, disposal of the existing court ruling in order to carry out uh, our own uh, action. So I think NLC is wrong in, in this regard, in my own opinion. Um, uh, since there is an existing and subsisting 
uh, culturally, I think it, it behoves of them to respect it. Indeed, they, they should have. And one wonders why they didn't appeal it. And however, this uh, government going to court to get this order is also perhaps part of the problem. You know, you are dialoguing with NLC and you're going to court to stop them from, you know, you, so it, it becomes like a two-edged sword. Do you yes, you understand. You know, when, when you're involved in war, you know, you, you try every avenue to, to become victorious. All, so all yeah, is fair I, in sure war. Government... All is fair in war. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all is fair. I think that is the right uh, cliche. Mm. You know, it's uh, you know, I'm sure the government was looking at it from the fact that, uh, or from the point of view that they are about losing, and uh, the time is is very short. So, what is the best way is actually to get uh, a court injunction stopping labor. Perhaps why the um, okay, Mohammed. What's it called? The negotiation is continued. Has abandoned uh, the negotiation. They, they, they feel the the, 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 the time. The, the time frame is very short. So in order to continue this, uh, strike action and protest. All right. Well, this time TUC and NLC are on the same page. So. Uh, so this... I think, uh, like we said, all is fair in. It's just again. I am. Okay, um, the network is making this conversation a bit untidy. Mohammed. Mohammed Abdullahi. Okay, yes. you're back. Hello. Okay. okay, let's just yes, try yes. and wrap up now because network is a bit uh, problematic this morning as it's been in the last couple of days. TUC and NLC are united mm -hmm. in this protest. Uh, it does seem like this one is going to be huge. Uh, how do you see the government responding? How do you see them reacting with all this uh, court thing in place and all of that? Um, they, 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 are, they are beginning to respond. Uh, the negotiation is ongoing. They've got in the court uh, uh, injunction stopping the team. Mm -hmm. It is the fact that the government is jittery, yes, um, because it's going to be very huge if both parties, I mean, the, the, the NLC and TUC can unite and, and hold government to the jugular. And so um, they, 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 they are beginning to, they are responding, actually. And then the, the language there, the body language of the government is that they are jittery. They actually do not want the strike action to take place because it's going to be very catastrophic. Remember, we are actually on the brink of economic growth. So the NLC striking uh, indefinitely again will compound our issues and problems. So uh, yeah, the, the government is uh, is jittery, and actually, in my own understanding, they do not want the plan action to take place. Indeed. Well, let's see what happens. It's a few days from now, three days to the day that has been scheduled for this NLC strike. The CSOs have also said they have vowed and ha they have written uh, that they are going to also organize anti-NLC protests across the 36 states and the NLC. That day is a day indeed that uh, most Nigerians are already counting down to. NLC um, have advised Nigerians to go stockpile on foods and uh, make sure that they are ready for that day. Only God knows how it's going to turn out. We pray for a peaceful um, resolution. And perhaps even if the protest will go on, we pray for it to be very peaceful because that's one of the challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes these uh, protest actions, before you know it, degenerates into chaos and conflict and crisis, which compounds the problem. So um, whatever the situation may be, I think as Nigerians, what we should pray for is that there should be peace because that's very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to have crisis uh, coupled with the challenges that we have on ground across the country. Indeed, indeed. Thank you so much, Mohammed Abdullahi, for your time. Thank you very much, my pleasure. Mohammed Abdullahi, public affairs analyst, has joined us from Kaduna State on our first hot topic. We'll be back with our second hot topic. Do stay with us.